Hi guys. Welcome to our daily stock market insights. This is Miss JD, and um, welcome to uh, the November 26th episode. Technically, uh, time now is 1:47 in the morning, so we are going to uh, check out our uh, impression of uh, how the market went for November 25th okay so consider this is a pre-market open discussion for the November 26th market day all right <clears throat> and um, I've already uh, gathered all your requests by the way thank you so much for those people who have uh, dropped a comment and are consistently um, looking forward to our uh, review so I hope if you have already uh, if you're already sleeping, uh, try to check this out before the market starts. And uh, these are all for you guys, right? Um, I have here, by the way, so as I review the comments, I I have a question. Oh, okay. So this one is um, Raging Fire. He was asking about uh, eToro because I already created a video in eToro. I'm uh, very much active in eToro nowadays. So he was asking if there's a board lot requirement. I said no. And he asked again, thanks for your reply. How about selling stocks? Do they charge some fees on it? Um, so when you buy, um, when you buy a stock and you want to close your position uh, and you don't use leverage, there's no fee. So even if you sell that uh, uh, buy position, there's no fee. However, if you are going to open a sell position, when I say sell position, you're betting on a stock to go down. Even if you use uh, times one leverage or you're not going to borrow money from the platform, there's a charge. So um, it will take effect when you close the, when you close the uh, position. So there's only one set of charge there. It's either the daily charge or in the overnight uh, fee. Okay, so it will also show there, but it, you are only charged once. Okay, but if you are going to um, do a buy position, uh, there's no charge. Okay, so if, our, if you are to look at it, you actually are able to save money when you trade the U.S. market. And like in the, in the Philippines, you get charged when you buy, you get charged when you sell. So in both occasions, if you... So if you add it up, it's a it's a significant amount, especially when you're trade when you are now trading a large amount of money, right? But imagine uh, trading one hundred thousand here compared to your one hundred thousand in eToro. There's no charge, so all the gains will be yours, except for the selling position, of course. There's a very very minimal fee. Okay. Also, hard truth here was. Um, sharing his experience about col financial and i was also sharing if you can read this i was sharing my own um, experience about the platform giving me a, a headache at one point about my experience in uh, one of my trades it did not push through because it was laggy so what i did uh, i posted a a poll here guys so if you can check check that out uh, let's help hard truth and you can also help me because I'm in the quest for you know uh, I wanted to find out which platform is best so if you had good experience with your platform apart from COL financial feel free to drop a comment and uh, answer the poll so um, we could already consider and we you know we could take action and um, Vincent, S-S-I-V-U-L, I have that. Got it. Uh, ACX, ABBA, and TUGS. There. I have that, Benjamin. MPI, TEL. Marco, PHA, ACX, Nickel. Okay, got that. Um, Ma and MRSGI for Nikki, FB and Bloom. Okay, I have it. Okay, so these are our um, 
stocks. These are the stocks we are going to review tonight. Okay, so I got them already. Let's get started because it looks like um, the list is a bit long. Okay. Let us first talk about our index. So index um, did some decline, profit taking. I would always say it's a profit taking um, day because we've been rallying uh, significantly for the past how many weeks. And I mentioned yesterday that uh, we are looking at around the 7,000 level and indeed it dropped there. But let's just have uh, some wiggle room because it could also do an overshoot and uh, it could potentially drop up to this level. And uh, what I can say is that this is just a temporary retracement because uh, a lot of our institutions are already profitable and they're just locking in their profits. What I can say, um, meanwhile, is that we are anticipating some more growth and uh, reversals in, in the coming days. <clears throat> but there are a lot of stocks that retraced today uh, as, a, as an effect of uh, the index also being down. So just um, hang, hang in there, we'll check out all your stocks, okay? 6927 would be my um, uh, forecast as to the possible drop by tomorrow or later, okay? We're already within the uh, healthy level of our RSI, so that's fine. Let's take a look at VUL. VUL also experienced that drop. Uh, pretty much um, got affected by the overall performance of the market, perhaps. So this is a solid drop, as you can see. So now, in case there will be some more <clears throat> selling pressure that will happen, I see a strong support around the 0.92 level. If you were to look, um, look at the chart to the left, uh, you see a solid consolidation that happened right at this area. And so I feel that there will be a possible bounce right there. Sometimes guys you have to take note that it doesn't really have to touch the area where I plotted it. It is an area therefore it could be slightly higher or lower remember that okay. Uh, overall if you are to look at it long term um, for mid to long term investors uh, I, I would have to say the point how much point zero eight cents difference is uh, it won't make any big impact. So uh, if you are considering VUL for long-term investing, the area where it is at right now, meaning between 0.92 to 1 peso level, is a very healthy area. And uh, just look at it. Try to stick to your plan. And uh, remind yourself of what your objective is, especially if you're saying to yourself that you are going to get in for long-term purposes or mid-term purposes. Because we still have some, some more uh, room for, you know, your risk to reward ratio is still at a very promising level. So this could give you a possible gain of 202%. Imagine that. Let's say you haggle only up to 100% or even 75%. That's easier to achieve, right? From 1 peso, for instance, up to a 166, that's a 76% gain. That's for VOL. A C E X. Wow, this stock. This stock did a gap up. What was the news about? Okay, so you you can just check out the news here, but uh, we're just referring to the technicals, okay? Uh, given that it's a twenty four point six percent increase in just the span of a day. Well, I, I can consider this already as a the gap here has been filled within the day. So I think that's a better story than you have a solid gap up and then continues to climb. Only to discover a few days it will go back to that uh, gap. And like this stock, it, it did uh, fill the gap within the day. So at least that's good. You're also um, backed up by a good volume right here. So what I can say is that if you want to haggle, I think the a, a good area to probably place your order would be around 8.08. .08. The reason why I'm saying that is if I look to the left, I have one stop here, another stop right over here, this one as well. 
I mean, sorry, <laughs> this is the area. That's the previous resistance. So we all know that when we start to break that level, uh, chances are we could also revisit that, most likely something to this effect um, there. Or sometimes it does this, okay, and then do that. Okay, so just um, decide where you'd like to enter. Uh, would it be exactly at 808 or slightly higher than that? You're fine. Um, what's important is just know why you're entering this stock. Uh, we're technically halfway, right? This used to be the peak and uh, this used to be the bottom right here and then we're just halfway recovering. Uh, but at least, you know, while we uh, when we did this sh a long sideways here, it only took us a day to recover how many months worth of sideways. So I think those people who managed to really um, hang into their position and hold on to their stock, this one day is already a big uh, recovery or gain on your portfolio. The next one is ABBA. <clears throat> ABBA has already started recovering. I think this one is a good bounce. This is a bounce for ABBA. Um, but for now, I can say that maybe you can try to haggle around the 0.6 level or uh, even a slight, slightly higher than that is fine, around 0.62. That is still an okay level if you want to get in. There is a resistance right here. So I just feel like some people might take profit and... Uh, a few cents um, could give you a, a more profitable setup. And uh, the peak here is 1.09, or we're also like one third. You've filled one third of the, the uh, maximum gain. I'm not saying that this is the maximum like lifetime, but uh, this used to be, yeah, this is the 52 week high, if I'm not mistaken, or this was the all time high. Let's see if um, this stock will again give us a, a dividend. So, so far last year was the start of uh, the, the company giving out dividends. And what's interesting is they gave out twice um, because I think they had a really, really good year um, back in 2019. Let's check out the, they had a negative, right? Negative, negative as well. So I'm not really counting on their uh, dividend release in next year nope but at least we're we're slowly climbing up so we'll try to haggle around 0.62 then tugs <clears throat> tugs look at that see we're like forming a letter u and we're almost there i'd say uh the climb is also the climb has just started and um, the doji, oh, it's not a doji. <clears throat> so in case people will be taking profit, the nearest support would be 1.53. You already had some foreign buying, so anywhere between 153 to 168 actually is good. It's still okay. Um, I'm just plotting the nearest support so you know how far we are uh, from the support area because anything can happen. Uh, that support level could be revisited. So uh, try to uh, decide for yourself which area would you like to enter. Uh, if this you're solid with your conviction in tugs, I think anywhere uh, between 153 to 168 is already okay because you are after um, the long-term um profitability of this stock right imagine that we are just starting so still at a good level if um, you have already studied the fundamentals of this stock so good catch here mpi mpi also started recovering it's nice that we had uh, dips right here so it makes the climb more stable what i can see here is that okay we are just right at the MA20 line, okay? In fact, slow, slightly lower, but there you see a small wick right there. So it looks like it is still respecting 
our MA20 level. So if you'd like to um, enter at this point, my, my best recommendation when we are at the MA20 line, try to gauge how the market is going to move uh, later today. If most of the action is higher than 4.13, chances are there will be a bounce at that area. But if 80% of the time within the day, the sentiment is still uh, moving downwards, that means the uh, sell-off is not over yet. <clears throat> so just in case, okay, in case this breaks, I see it dropping right at this level, around 3.98. 3.96 yeah there's also a resistance nearby and there's some stabilization that happened right here but we'll still see we'll, let's observe because this was already a solid drop from a 440 to 413 um, we're banking on this MA20 line next one is tell <clears throat> Oh no, Tal broke the MA20. See this? Once it starts to uh, break the MA20 line, it also continues uh, its sell-off. So what I can say here is that, so technically there's a support here, right? Now, I'm still going to plot it there because that could also be respected. However, I, I also see another support forming at this area. See that? That's a support. This is a resistance. This is a resistance. And so chances are it could also uh, revisit that level. But I'm not neglecting this key level over here because that used to be a support as well. So pretty much the same as what I mentioned earlier. If most of the action may be um, first three, first four hours of the day, um, the sentiment is uh, from 1,326 or higher, then that could already mean you're bouncing. You can probably um, do an end of day trading. That way you're very sure. Uh, just take note, guys. Um, on the first 30 minutes of the of the day, normally this is the most uh, volatile um, period. Sometimes you think that the, the direction is already up there, but only to find out that after an hour. It goes the other way around. So that's why a lot of people are also using end of day trading as a strategy when they trade. Okay, so I'm plotting two lines. Okay, so that's your first area of support. Second area of support in case this bre this breaks. Uh, 1,274.59 would be the next level. The next one is uh, PHA. PHA, well, because this has been a solid climb, very, very steep. So I think the next area it could visit would be around this level. So uh, we might still have some more um, selling by, um, by today. Look at this. This used to be a resistance and a support right over here. So maybe it will revisit that level and hopefully it just bounces at that area. Okay, but definitely 0.64 is a key level to monitor and observe um, how the market is going to behave at that point. The next one is nickel. Nickel. <clears throat> nickel over here is, I think this is a bounce for nickel, right? Or a breakout. We had a breakout for nickel right over here. So there used to be a resistance. And then today we opened and started to uh, move higher than that. And by the way, we're very near a 52-week high. So just be extra careful as we might experience some rejection right there. This used to be a resistance, but a really good if we are going to break that. Now, what you can do probably is um, try to uh, negotiate uh, between 4.45 to 4.70 if you want to uh, be near a possible support because your previous resistance, now that we have broken our resistance, uh, chances are we can do something like this, right? 
who created support at the previous resistance. Um, but I just noticed something, guys. Uh, there's foreign buying that uh, happened today, so maybe the, we will have some more bullish movements uh, by today as well. Uh, volume also started to pick up, so that's interesting. Look, your RSI is um, showing some decline as we have a decline in momentum. So I'm just pegging it at 445 in case it drops. 445 is the key area. It might create a support right there. Next one is FB. I was looking at this. I'm not sure if it was yesterday or today. Okay, so this one over here, um, this this could already mean that uh, the resistance area right at this level is already rejecting it. So I'm thinking we can probably um, stabilize first right at this level where you used to have your resistance here and some stabilization over here. So maybe within the day, I, I am hoping we could just have a long wick to revisit this key area and continue the uptrend. Because this stock as well has been affected and be, has been uh, significantly, um, yeah, has been significantly affected and then the price dropped big time. And we are just starting. Look at that. If you are a mid to long term uh, uh, investor, you'd really look into the uh, longer time horizon and check the pattern of all our charts here. And imagine how much it dropped in a span of what two years and we're starting to recover so you're still at a very very good level so you're let's say if you had just if you just joined the stock market today and you're saying to yourself oh i have joined it i have joined the market too late already no actually not uh the price where we are in right now are most our price levels back in the back 10 years ago five years ago right here this was a price back in 2018. So this was um, price equivalent to two years ago. So you're just fine. Uh, but in our entire life, uh, this is a rare, uh, a double-edged sword, right? It's an opportunity for investors because we're able to get um, the prices at a very cheap level. But of course, the incident what's happening right now it is really not good uh, a lot of lives have been affected by it but for investors this is a good time to buy let's take a look at bloom bloom over here is currently well it's currently consolidating right at the resistance area so I think, you know, what we're waiting here is a breakout to happen. And with, what, four days of being like that? Um, maybe if we, if we have good volume, then we could break that. But if you have another red day tomorrow, then probably I'd, uh, I'd say let's wait for it to drop a few uh, cents more. And then uh, that's the time we enter. I see it dropping right at this area. So maybe around here, 852, in case it, it retraces, right? But in the event it starts much higher than 891 and then we have one full candlestick higher than 890, then that's a better story. Look at this, this there was consolidation right here too. <clears throat> I hope this is a, a, a good sign because we had foreign buying that happened. That's for Bloom. And let's see how much are we expecting for this price to move up. Wow, it used to be in the 14 level, so that's almost 100%. Double your money. Let me see. Yeah, around 78% possible gain. Let's check out MAG. As for MAG, we are also started moving higher, so we have created a higher high. 
I'm sorry about that. This used to be the highest point, and then we reach this level, and it's higher high, creating a higher high. So if it is going to drop, what I can see is for it to drop probably around the 363 level. Okay, the reason why I'm saying that is because of this. Okay, if you move to the left, there used to be a resistance here. Okay, and so if it goes down, it might drop up to that level. Okay, it might drop up to 363. So maybe you can do a haggle. And uh, you still have a lot of uh, potential right here if you're going to stay longer. There. Okay. Um, I have a very noisy background, so I'm really sorry, guys. Maybe I can break this into two parts. Uh, the next uh, video I'm going to make would be from MBT, AGI, PHR, IDC, Double Dragon, SEC, uh, SSI, VOL, MA, and MRSGI. Um, I have a very noisy background. I'm sorry about that. In the meantime, I hope I was able to uh, give some good insights for you today. I, I look forward to uh, your comments. And by the way, I'm also in Patreon, so if you would like to support Ms. JD, and if you'd like to know my uh, stock picks, I am posting them in Patreon. And eToro, if you'd like to uh, trade the U.S. market as well, I have the link down below. In the meantime, thank you and bye-bye.